So come on down, grab your ball, your big exercise ball. You're gonna lay right on your back. We're gonna bring our feet right up onto the ball. Just to relax. So feet on ball, pull the ball right into your hamstrings. So great way to just unload, unload the spine. And once you're here, just take some time to just breathe, to be able to settle into the body. So just focus on the breath and what's happening with the breath. Don't force anything. Just let the breath be what it'll be. Might feel a little shallow or choppy as you begin, but the longer you stick with the breath, the more you can lengthen each inhale and each exhale. the more the body will start to relax. So inhale, fill up from the belly all the way up. Slowly exhale. Nice, slow inhale, longer, slower exhales. Tapping right into the parasympathetic nervous system, allowing our body to rest, relax, and digest. So from here, let's add a little bit of pelvic tilt um, to start getting a little bit more active uh, in those core muscles and into the spinal area a little bit. So feel a little bit of that lift when you start, but then as you start to draw in and activate, contract those core muscles, you should feel that back flatten towards the floor. Let's be real gentle here.
Let's go ahead, release those pelvic tilts, and now we can be on the ball. You're just going to gently roll the ball to one side a little bit, and then bring it back. It's nice and easy, very small motion. It's just going to send little messages to the oblique muscles. And then let's gently release from there. So at this point, let's get rid of the ball, bring the feet to the floor. The knees are going to be bent, feet are still flat on the floor. Bring a little ways, well, more than a little ways away from your rear, but keep some width between the feet so you can then. Just gently drop those knees a little bit side to side. It's nice and easy. We're not forcing anything. Just trying to loosen some things up around the hips now. Retraining to the body a little bit to not live in this painful restricted state after we've tweaked our back and let it do its thing for a few days. We're gonna try and assist it along a little bit. So let's bring it back to center. And then you're gonna cross the ankle over the thigh, just a little figure four here. Take your hand on your knee, and just assist pulling the knee in towards the body a little bit and then gently pulling it or pushing it out. So just moving that knee in and out a little. Or we settle in to a more static stretch. Perfect. So now just let that knee kind of fall where it will sit naturally. Just relax. Come back to your breath. Trying to flood that body with good clean oxygen. Again. And to help heal in the stillness and through the breath. And let's go ahead and uncross that leg and then cross the other one over and start with a little bit of movement here using your hand to pull your knee in well and then out a little. And then bring that knee out, and now just hold.
So let's go ahead and cross that leg. And then bring both knees up into your body a little bit. Just give yourself a gentle hug. Be cold here. If it feels okay, you can move on the foot side to side. And then from there, we're going to bring the feet back to the floor. We're going to do another round of pelvic tilts. And we activate those feet stabilizers. We've got some core work intertwined throughout this just to help those core muscles along to be able to help with that. And let's just hold here. And then just release that contraction and come into that neutral position. Now with one knee, and think about the movement here, less is more on this, it's the knee fall out. So you're gonna keep one side of the body nice and stable. With the other knee, you're gonna let it come out just a little bit. So you feel a little bit of action on the outside of the leg and into the glute, you're gonna pull it back in. So again, this is not a huge movement. Um, the foot stays flat on the floor. And feel that other side of the body, that non-moving side, being nice and stable. And now bring that knee back in. We're going to keep this side of the body stable and move that other knee out and in. So now let's take that leg you were just moving and either you can keep it the way it is or you can lengthen it out on the floor if that feels all right. And then the first knee we were working with, we're now going to just bring it up and in towards the body. Either hold on the back of the leg or below the kneecap. And then while you're here, let's move that foot around in some circles. Getting that ankle mobility active just a few times in each direction and then bring it back to neutral and just point and flex the foot. Now let's send that leg away. Let's bring the other one in. A nice squeeze. We're not trying to force it into what might be the exact position if we were not in some sort of pain. Sort of forced to go to what would otherwise be your normal healthy range of motion. I'm going to go ahead and send that leg away. And let's walk both feet back in towards your glutes. Uh, press your arms into the floor and now we're just going to come into some gentle bridges. So I want you to draw the ribs down. 
tilt the pelvis a little bit up. So we've got that core engagement. And then just start to peel the hips off the ground. Just come to where it's comfortable. Again, it might be less than on a normy, normal, healthy performance day. And then hover it down. Lift it up. Lower it down. Squeeze those buns a little bit just to get them reactivated again. We're just trying to let the body know that we want to get back to a more quote unquote normal state. And after this period of injury, we've got to retrain those muscles a little bit to do what they were used to doing more automatically. And let's just hold at the top of the range for a moment. Squeeze those glutes a little bit. Hopefully you're feeling the glutes active and that you're not just feeling any pain in the back. Let's go ahead and slowly lower down, little by little. And then from there, we're going to bring the bottom of our feet together and let our knees open. And again, even on this, you might feel your knees a little bit more lifted than they would otherwise be. Just honor that. Going back to your breath, try to stay connected with your breath in the moments of movement. Of really going intentionally into your breath to be able to flood the body with good clean oxygen in those moments of stillness. So gently use your hands to press your legs back together. Once they're together, you might just swish a little bit side to side. Again, gentle, gentle, less range of motion. And then from there, let's roll over onto our stomach. Come all the way down, your forehead on the floor, your forearms on the floor, the palms of your hands on the floor. Let's bring the feet a little bit wide, tops of the feet on the floor. And you might do a couple little um, pelvic movements here, just to kind of get that realignment nice. <clears throat> so you feel your stomach on the floor. You're going to... Um, Press into your hands and your forearms a little bit and just lift your head and chest just a little bit. It's not a huge motion here. And then lower it down. Press it up. <coughs> lower it down. A couple more here. I feel the length of the spine as you lift a little bit. And then release. Um, if you're feeling good as you're doing this, you can also um, 
pull your hands down. Now see your hands are at shoulder level, but your elbows are lifted, and you can press through your hands and lift a little bit higher if you want. But again, you got to use your judgment. I wouldn't recommend this if you're still feeling a little bit of uh, spasming and whatnot. But this is a good one to build into as you continue to get better. So from there, let's bring ourselves up onto all fours. Spread your fingers out, making a nice, nice big hands for your base of support. Get your knees right under your hips, and then let's move through a little bit of cat and cow. With that inhale, we drop the belly a little bit, lift the eyes. Exhale, we're going to tuck the chin a little bit and arch the back. And remember on that cat pose, you can kind of choose how far up the spine you want to go so you can stay a little bit lower in that low back. Or you can move a little bit higher into that thoracic spine. Or you can do both. It's just kind of have fun with it there. The most benefit re-establishing what you know to be your healthy body. Let's do one more cycle. And then bring it up to the straight position, eyes looking a little forward towards the end of your mat. And then let's go into a little bit of bird dog here. Press and lengthen arm and leg and bring it back in. Gently pulling that front body in. Go for one more on each side. And then from there, let's bring it back in to child's pose. So remember, you have that option. You can open the knees up or keep the knees close. You can really stretch the arms out over your head, or you can keep them a little bit closer into your body. From there, let's rise back above, getting into that nice aligned tabletop. And then you're going to take one arm and you're just going to reach it out to the side, up, following with the head if that feels good, and then bring it down. Let's go over to the other arm, palms down as you reach up. We're not trying to force a certain range of motion. Just come wherever feels comfortable. And maybe as a few reps go on, you get a little bit further, but that's not really the goal here. Just try to bring some rotation back after what has probably been a little bit more stillness without some of the normal 
<clears throat> extensive movement that you have in a, in a normal day and with some of the normal workouts. Let's do one more on each side. And then we're going to do the same thing, but with the legs. So keeping that bent leg, we're just going to lift out to the side. And again, don't force it to go a certain height. Work with the stability around the pelvis. The body's going to want to lean as you lift the leg. We want to try and, you know, not lean too, too much. So we use that core those core muscles to be able to keep the pelvis steady and to prevent the body from really leaning into that one side. <clears throat> Last one. And then from there, we're gonna come back in to child's pose again. So do the child's pose just a little differently than the first one. So I started with my knees wide. So this time I'm gonna keep them close. I had my arms extended out the first time. So this time I'm gonna keep them in a little bit more of me and I'm gonna bring them down at my side with my palms in. Well, let's go ahead from this child's pose. We're going to just transition down onto our stomachs. Just slowly inch your way forward and down. And here, you can use one arm to rest your forehead if you want. And use your hand and try to reach the foot. And just come into a quad stretch here on your stomachs. So your stomach stays down, your hips stay down, and you're just trying to fold heel to butt, feeling the stretch on the front of the thigh. And let's go ahead and release that foot and then go to the other side. And gently release. And you're gonna bring both hands forward. You're gonna stack your hands to rest your forehead on, and then we're gonna go into a big extension. So tighten up the stomach a little bit, let the hips be heavy on the floor. And then it's just an alternating leg lift here. Hips stay down. The top of the quad is not gonna lift off the floor. It's really that lower leg knee in the bottom part of the quad. Feeling the glutes, feeling the hamstrings, a little bit of both as you lift and lower.
and then join knees from there. So now from this position, we're going to just take one leg and start to inch the knee out and a little bit up. So a little half Spider-Man pose here to open up the hips. You can just rest on your stomach. Forehead to hands or ear to mat. Adjust the leg if you need to. And hopefully by this part of the practice, you're starting to, or hopefully the body has been out of the fight or flight mode before this practice, but um, this is sort of the first little active period. The body might have tried to retreat into fight or flight. So just try to gently guide it into some relaxation. And let's go ahead and carefully bring that leg back down to a straight position and then inch the other knee up. And just honor where it wants to be. And let's go ahead and slowly bring that leg back down. And then from there, let's lift those feet up, keeping the thighs down, and just gently swish those legs side to side. And then release them back down. Gently bring yourself up to all fours. And then to your forearms. You're going to go ahead and take one leg out to the side now. Just stretch on the inside of that leg a little more. Can rock back on that kneeling leg. So rock you back a little bit. So you're feeling some stretch in your glutes, a little bit in the back. And then let's go ahead and bring that leg in. If it feels better to be up on your hands, by all means, you can be up on your hands. And then take the other leg out. And then let's bring that in. And we're going to go for a little plank pose. Uh, so feel free to uh, maybe try on up on your toes and go to your knees if it doesn't feel good or start on your knees and if it feels good come up to your toes so just pick what works just draw everything in no matter where you're at pull the pelvis a little up pull the ribs a little bit down and then pull those boots right around creating that strong center container 
And even if we're on our knees, we're still kind of just hovering off the floor. Give the glutes a little squeeze. Feel the length in the spine. Maybe the body is feeling a sense of relief with a little bit more uh, structured uh, work. And then gently release. All right, so from there, if it feels possible for you, we're gonna do a pigeon pose. So we wanna lengthen one leg back and then bring one leg up and a little bit across the body. And again, maybe not forcing it into the great range of motion I know you have um, on a really normal, healthy day, but maybe the foot is staying a little bit back and not so much across. And then you can come down and rest on those forearms. Rest the head. This is the final stretch before we take a little bit of Shavasana time. So you can stay here a little bit longer or you can come up and switch it to the other side again, taking your time, making that transition. Just noticing how you feel. Hopefully it's a little bit better than when you started. And yeah, let's gently come out of that. And for this one, you can just kind of roll up to the side if you want. So that back leg releases and you can kind of bring it around. So now let's come down onto our back. Back where we started. You can um, bring the ball back in if you want to. Or maybe just place something behind your knees for a little bit more support on your back. And just rest here, letting the body absorb everything you just gave it. And I get to say just some nice slow breathing here. And just try to feel that nice natural alignment of the body. We really talked about this at the beginning, but shoulders sit, our head sits above the shoulders. The shoulders are relaxed away from the ears and the shoulder blades just kind of nestle themselves into the mat and a little bit in towards the spine. And then our ribs sit atop of our hips. Our hips feel heavy on the floor, fairly centered and level. From there, we've got our knees 
right at the top of our ankles. So you feel that, like that kind of that straight line coming from the ankles up to the knees, up to the hips. Here in Shavasana, take as much time as feels good for you. Try to really be in that stillness. And then once you're ready to move on into the rest of your day, just slowly, steadily bring yourself out of Shavasana. Just little movements and maybe a full body stretch or giving yourself a hug with the knees coming into the body. Just a little bit of anything that feels good and natural and not just quote unquote rushing up and out of the practice. It's helpful, hope it made you feel a little bit better and aided your transition in your body, but also your mind that this too shall pass and you'll get back to your normal quote unquote fighting condition uh, before you know it. So come back to this video anytime as often as you would like. And I look forward to seeing you soon.